Hey everybody, it's taken me a little while to get this video completed, but here it is, my video on stacking. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> For everybody who wanted their Luna fix. <laughs> hey everybody and welcome back. This video is on stacking, it goes on a little bit about the theory and we'll show you how to do a very very basic stack in Deep Sky Stacker. So let's get into the video. If you like what you see don't forget to hit like, subscribe and the bell. So back in sort of December 2017 I took my first Deep Sky object and it was Bode's Galaxy. There's the really bright nucleus if you can't tell. Um, which was 12 million light years away. And I was so pleased. It was like um, a single 30 second exposure and I posted it online and I was like, wow, I've taken a picture of a galaxy. It, you know, and I was just so happy with it. And everyone online was super, super encouraging. And then they said, why don't you go and take some more and then stack the pictures? And I was like, whoa what is stacking. So I started looking into it and rapidly came across a free program called Deep Sky Stacker. Now this is a free program and it's where most people start and it works and you can load your light frames in and your calibration frames which we'll cover in another video and out pops a really dark image which you then need to stretch. See my video on stretching for how to do that. But a lot of people wonder what is actually going on in the program when your image is being stacked. So let's get down to it and you know discuss what actually goes on. So here we have an image sensor and this like grid is our pixels so we're just going to look at this one first here's our target in the middle this is our deep sky object and we've literally got the smallest sensor in the world it's four pixels by four pixels but yeah there we go that circle is our target now let's say we take a 30 second exposure light is falling onto those pixels and each pixel gets a value with how much signal it has received so i'm just going to number these with you know random numbers that the pixel might have received so you'll notice the ones where our target is have a higher pixel value and that's because they've received more signal from the target. Now the rest of the pixels have very very low values so this would be like dark space um, but as you see they're not all constant and the same and that is noise in the image. So this is our first frame. So then we take another one got the same and you'll see that the pixels surrounding have changed again this is just due to random noise and it might be a noise in your sensor it might be noise from you know just noisy space but the the signal from our target has stayed relatively constant and now we'll take another frame once again, the signal in our central target area has stayed relatively constant, but the noise has changed frame on frame. So there we've got it. We've got three frames, each with our target in it. So this might be, you know, a nebula or a star or something. But around our target, the noise values, sorry, the pixel values have changed due to noise. What stacking does, and this is the very, I'm going to cover the most basic mode of stacking, and it's called averaging, average stacking. So we take each of those three frames, just draw a new pixel grid. 
not very neat at this. Here's our target. This is the stacked frame. And what it does, it looks at each frame in your series and just averages out the pixel number. So that would be six, seven, and I'm just gonna make sure they're rounded. If we now look at this stacked frame, you'll notice that the pixel values of the target have stayed similar to what they were, but the noise, the pixels surrounding the target have been smoothed out. So those threes have become twos, the twos have become ones, and the whole sort of thing looks smoother. There's not such a great variation between the pixel values on the outside of the target. So this is what stacking does. And in reality, you would take a lot more than three frames. We'd be aiming for as many as possible. Um, but what pick, uh, stacking does, it smooths out noise, but preserves the signal in our target. Basically, and you'll see this term used a lot, we stack in, we get a better signal to noise ratio. But how do we do it? So firstly, I'm gonna tell you to go and download Deep Sky Stacker, which is a very simple program to use when you know how. And I'll show you how to do some very simple stacking. Now, what I've just shown you with a bit of the maths and what happens in the theory, that is it in its simplest terms. There are other methods of stacking, but just for a bit of background, I just thought I'd give you the most basic method. So first things first, you're gonna to wanna to get yourself a copy of Deep Sky Stacker. Now, it's pretty easy to find, just open up, you know, a browser, search browser and type in Deep Sky Stacker and it should be the first result. And if you go on to click on it, go to download, you'll be able to um, download the latest version. I already have Deep Sky Stacker and it comes with Deep Sky Stacker Live which is something different and I'll cover that in another video. But if we just open up Deep Sky Stacker we can do some initial settings checks. Now it looks kind of empty but this is the main bit you're going to be interested in. So we're going to click Raw, Fits and DDP Settings. Now if we go to Fits Files, if you're using a DSLR you can leave this unchecked because the information in the file headers from your DSLR should tell Deep Sky Stacker everything it needs to know about those files. If you're using a Astro camera, you're going to want to tick this box and you're going to have to put in the Bayer matrix of your camera. Now, if you don't know this, this can be usually found out from the manufacturers or if you do like a Google search on some forums, chances are somebody's asked the same question at some point and basically you can get it from them. I'm going to be using the Altair file, sorry, I'm going to be using files from the Altair Astro 269C, which I know has a generic RGGB Bayer matrix. So if your files are coming out as monochrome, after you know if, if you're if they once you've stacked and it's all monochrome check these settings are correct so i'm just going to click okay and apply 
Now, for this video, I'm going to use some light files, and I'm not going to use any darks or flats or any other calibration files because when I was a beginner, I wasn't so sure about these and I started stacking without them. Calibration files are pretty essential, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to leave them out. So, I'm just going to go open picture files and I'm going to load in my frames. Now, if I was using darks and flats, I would load them in exactly the same way, except clicking on the relevant file type, so dark, flat, dark flats, and offset or bias files. We can see in the file list, this little symbol here, Deep Sky Stacker knows these frames have come from a colour camera. And I'm just going to click check all. And now I'm going to click register checked pictures. So you can pretty much leave it at the default if you like. So it will select the best 80% of pictures and stack them. Some people go through and remove bad frames manually. Um, some people just go ahead and stack and let Deep Sky Stacker make the decision for them. And if we have a look at the re recommended settings, it tells you kind of what you're doing. If we go to stacking parameters, for this we're just going to leave it in standard mode and we're going to use the average stacking mode which is kind of what I discussed on the whiteboard. But there are other ways, so if you've got like loads of satellite trails through your image you could use a Kappa Sigma clip to get rid of those. I'm just going to click OK. If we go to the advanced tab I'm going to leave the star detection threshold at 10%. If you were struggling to get any stars detected, you could c decrease it all the way down to 2%. But for, the, for this, we're going to leave it at 10 And I'm going to click OK. And it's telling me that I've got 46 frames and with a total exposure of 34 minutes and 30 seconds. And I'm just going to click OK. So off it goes, registering. Um, it tells you how long it thinks it's going to take. So I'm going to let this carry on and we'll come back after it's been stacked. OK, so Deep Sky Stacker has finished stacking and you can see that it's out of those 46 frames, it's only stacked 36, so it's chucked out the worst frames. Um, and it's also saved it as a 32 bit TIFF file so you can pretty much open that up straight away in Photoshop or you can go save picture to file um, and you can specify what you want to save it as. So we've already got the auto saved TIFF so I'm going to exit out of Deep Sky Stacker and I'm going to show you a super quick process of our stacked file in Photoshop. So here's our auto saved TIFF from Deep Sky Stacker and you'll notice that it's opened it up as a 32 bit and it looks super super dark. First thing you want to do is you want to go to image mode 16 bits per channel and where it says method hit exposure and gamma. And then I'm just going to crop the image slightly to get rid of any stacking artifacts and I'm going to start stretching. I'm going to go to image adjustments and levels. Now I'm going to do gentle gentle stretches. You could do this as a new adjustment layer but just for the purpose of this video I'm just going to stretch it rather quickly. So still being quite gentle you'll notice that the histogram is showing the green signal is a lot stronger than the red and the blue. That's because for in a colour camera there's two green pixels for every one at red and green. And I'm just going to even that histogram out by first selecting the red channel and I'm going to keep an eye on the histogram. Then I'm going to 
stretch the green channel to make those peaks line up. And then I'm going to select the blue channel and do exactly the same. So this is very rough and ready, but you can see already those colours are looking a lot better. So that's literally like 27 minutes on the Orion Nebula with the Altair 269. So Deep Sky Stacker works super super well. Now what I'm going to show you is what happens when we stack 5 frames, 10 frames, 20 frames and 40 frames. And I'm going to use exactly the same data and I'm going to show you the noise levels in each image. So here's that very same data. I re-ran it through Deep Sky Stacker a few times. I stacked 5 frames, then I stacked 10 frames, then 20 frames, and then the full lot of frames, which I think was like 40 frames. And it's each image, I basically created an action in Photoshop so that I applied exactly the same stretch to each image. And I've got those images here for you to have a look at. So here's the 5 frame image that's labelled and that's not labelled. But you can see here the, the area of the nebula that's quite smooth, there's a lot of signal, it's, you know, it's looking good. But when you come into the darker areas and like the wispy filaments, it's quite grainy. And there's a lot of colour noise. Um, and yeah, so you can imagine a couple of stretches and that grain would be very apparent and your image would, you know, while showing the nebula, it'd probably quite be quite noisy. Here's 10 frames. Exactly the same. The nebula's looking pretty much exactly as it was in the previous image. Look, check it out. But now that noisy area has is slightly less. Here you go. I'll blink it between. That's 5 frames. Here's 10 frames. 5 frames. 10 frames it's reduced just a touch but it has and here's 20 frames still once again that nebula is looking exactly the same but this grain is getting even less back to 10 back to 20 and now we go to 40 frames Still, that nebula is looking really nice, smooth, but this background is now looking really, really smooth and lovely. So the key here is, the more frames you stack, the more the noise gets smoothed out, and the more stretching and, what I like to say, punishment you can do to your data. Now, stacking doesn't really reveal any data that isn't already there in your image. I mean. If you haven't done a long enough exposure to capture a faint part of an object, then stack no matter how many frames you stack, you're not going to bring out that detail. If your exposures are long enough and you know it's showing up faint in one frame, then stacking is only going to help show that faint detail because you're smoothing out the noise that surrounds it. So there you go. I mean, the more frames you stack, the better basically. You do hit the point of diminishing returns at some point. I saw some pe some people say this is at 40 to 60 frames, and then some people say this is hundreds of frames. It's up to you to kind of make that judgment where that you know that point of well, there's no point of stacking any more frames actually is for your equipment. And I hope that video was useful. Um, and if you hadn't guessed from the banners behind, it's actually my birthday today and I'm having a little drink. So feel free to join me wherever you are. And as always, thanks for all the support and thanks for keeping on watching me. And I'll see you for the next video.